Hi there and welcome to Calculus of Variations. In this snippet we're going to look at a total differential in three dimensions. Now for this little video we're going to use a little thought experiment. Imagine you walked into your front room and your front room is square and in each corner you nailed in a corner of a bed sheet. So you ended up with a, a bed sheet hanging in your front room creating a surface. So if we were to draw something like that out, then you could imagine the floor of your room would look something like, let's say, look something like this here. I'll need to draw it down a bit actually. Um, I'll just get rid of that then out. I'll draw it down a bit further so you can you can get the whole thing in. So the floor of the bedroom would look something, or, or the living room would look something like that. Now in each corner you would hang a sheet. So imagine you started off at this corner here and that corner of the sheet you nailed to the floor. Let's say in this corner here you nailed your sheet to that point there. Let's say this corner you nailed your sheet to this point here and in this corner here you nailed your sheet to that point there. So as this sheet hung it would hang something something like that, it would go like that and this one here it would hang like that and then this corner here would come in, I'll try and get it drawn oh, there we go, it would hang like that and this corner here would hang down something like that. So you can get the gist of it, you can see that that's going to be some kind of surface. It looks like that. Okay. It's quite reasonable, I think. Okay, so you're going to have some surface that looks like that. Now, if you give this a set of coordinate axes, if you call this here your um, well, right, that there that there's your x and get up that direction there there's your y I'll try and do it a bit neater x and y and then get up up the way here we'll call that z okay so you could say this surface here is the surface z is in some way related as a function of x and it is a function of y. Now, if you were to look at, say, this function, and you look at the rate of change of the function in this direction, then we could say the rate of change of the function in that direction, I'll just come down, I'll leave that there so you can see it. The rate of change of the function in that direction, so you pick this point here, Okay, and you find the rate of change of the function at that point there. So the rate of change of the function at that point there, you could see it as, we've actually have to write it as a partial. Um, I'll just get my rubber there. Uh, there we go. Right, we could say that the rate of change of the function, partial f by partial x, now we're looking partial because we're looking at the rate of change of the function in that direction. Okay, we're holding y fixed. Okay, we're making y equal to zero. Okay, and we're looking at only the change of the function with respect to the x axis. So if we went partially by partial x, that's the rate of change of the function at that point there. Now if we were to multiply that by, now let's multiply as we did in the previous by some defined distance delta x okay then what we would have we would get a point up here somewhere okay which wouldn't be the full height there it would only be a partial part of the height there because that would be the height that we would get if we were to follow the tangent line to that point along this distance here so if we follow the tangent line along there 
we're not actually following the curve, it's the tangent line. So that would be our delta y tan, or delta x tan, sorry. So you would end up with a, a delta, sorry, it would be um, delta y tan. What it would be? It would actually be uh, it would actually be a, a height there. It would be a, a z, wouldn't it? It would be a, a, a delta z tan. Delta z tan, and we'll call it delta z tan. We'll just call it one because it's the delta z tan which has been created by delta x. Okay. Now, we could also look at the change in the function in this direction and keeping x fixed. So we could look at the gradient at that point, partial f of the function, partial f, partial y. So that's the gradient of the function at that point in that direction with x fixed at 0 times some distance delta y times distance delta y and that would give you a height up here which again would be some value delta z tan and we could call it tan 2 because it's the height generated by variation of the function in the y direction so then what we would have was what we would have would be two lines here, a line coming up along here and a line coming up there. Now, I don't know whether I should bother drawing them in or not because it might just confuse the drawing a bit too much. But we've got two lines here, okay? Then we could draw a surface and that surface that we would draw here, it wouldn't be a curved surface like this, it would just be a, a flat surface and the surface would be represent the surface that is tangent to the function at that point. Okay? In the same sense that in a one dimensional in one dimension the tangent it wouldn't be a surface, it would just be a line. And one dimension that way that we would just have a line that's tangent. But because it's in three dimensions, we're going to have an actual surface that's the tangent surface. So if we were to take both of these and add them up, so you went partial f by partial x delta x plus partial f by partial y, delta y, well what we would get is, we would get the height here, it's the change in the, change in the function, well let's do this one first, it would be the height here, which is the change in the function due to a change in the x direction, which is that height there, so we we take this height here, we could pop it across here, and we would have a certain height there, okay? That would be our delta z tan. Now, we would do the same at this other end here, and we would be adding on another height here. There. So we would have a total height there, which would be approximately the change of height of the function. Now, it wouldn't be exactly the height, there would be an error involved in it, in the same way that there's an error involved here, there's a small error there, and there's a small error there, so that means that there would be this error plus this error, there would be another error there. Okay, so we'd have that height there, which would be our, we could call it our delta z tan, okay, which is tan 1 plus tan 2. So let's, we could we'll just write that in, just write that, call it delta z tan. So that gives you a, a 
physical description of what this differential here looks like. Now, if we do the same as we had in the previous video, and we let our delta x here actually equal an infinitesimal dx, and our delta y equal infinitesimal, infinitesimal dy, then we could rewrite this as partial f upon partial x times dx plus partial f upon partial y times dy. Now that would equal our height here and it would be dz. Now if I'll take a wee block around this, that's the equation that we're, we're getting to there. And we know, as from the previous video, that as we allow delta x to tend towards zero, that is delta x becomes an infinitesimal dx, then this height here will tend towards the actual height there, which is dz, okay, as opposed to the height dz tan, which is the approximate height you would get when delta x is a fixed value that isn't tending towards zero, okay? So it's the exact same as we had seen in the previous video. So that there is our total differential for that two-dimensional, three-dimensional function. Z is a function of x and y. That there is our total differential for a three-dimensional function given by that form there. Okay, thanks for listening, and I'll get you in the next video.